Hello everyone, Christian here. The gold standard for product photography is having a clean photo with a white background. Let me show you a couple of ways to achieve this. Now, if you're a product photographer, you know that the background of your shots can make or break that final image. And while there are many options out there, a clean white background has proven to be the most effective and professional choice time and time again. So what makes a white background so special? Well, first and foremost, a white background allows the product to be the main focus of the photograph. So without any distractions or competing colors, the product is able to stand out and be seen clearly. This is especially important if you're trying to showcase the details or features of a specific product. So let's get on method number one on how to remove the background of a product photo. We're gonna use Photoshop for this. So we have our trusty Photoshop version 24.1.0 release. So I think this is the, the newest one so far. I don't remember exactly when they added this feature, but this feature is just amazing. So if you go here on the left-hand side and you go to the object selection tool, this is typically how I do it. Obviously Photoshop, they make it so that you have a thousand other ways on how to do this. With this, as you can see very clearly, like it already knows the background and the person in the shot, which is kind of crazy. But what I typically do is just, I just click select subject once I have that tool selected and then it makes the selection right there for me. You can then click on the clipping mask, add a mask and that just, there you go, boom, automatically gets rid of the background. If this is how you are manipulating your photos and you want to add that white background, then you can just either add a brand new layer, make sure that it's behind that picture. I like to use the paint bucket, just make sure it's all white, boom. White background with a clean cut product photography. Obviously we did the, uh, the clipping mask so that you can then go and adjust. So you can actually zoom in here and just kind of go along the edge. Just make sure as you can see, like right here, we're missing spots on, on that boot. So as long as we have that clipping mask selected, we can go to that brush tool and then we're gonna use the white brush in order to just add more to the picture. So as you can see, now we sort of added that back in. So doing the clipping mask is just a non-destructive way of, of achieving this result. So that way you can kind of come back and uh, potentially clean up some some things so maybe there's like a you know weird line right here you don't want that in there we can use black brush then make it smaller just kind of get rid of that weird line so yeah you can definitely go in here and then just manipulate them a little bit better and like clean them up like you would want any other you know product photography this is something that does take some time and it doesn't take as much time as it used to i will say that back in the day this is a, a pain to do but Thankfully, we've advanced in technology and now we have a bunch of different ways I'm gonna show you today on how to achieve this. So there we go, a white clean background on this product photography. Now, next thing after this is like, we wanna save this image, right? Best practice, I would do file, I would do export and then save for web legacy. This is usually what, what I do. And then right within here, the I guess the, the recommendation is if you have photography only, then a JPEG would be the way to go. If you have some form of graphic with text and other elements, then a PNG will be the way to go. That's how I say those two, by the way. If you have some other ways of saying it, or maybe the correct way of saying that, that's fine. Let me know in the comments. Um, that's how I say them. So it, I would do a JPEG if it's just strictly photography. I would do a PNG if you have maybe some text or some other elements added uh, right within there. If it's product photography, you don't really need any additional elements or anything to them. It should just be the product photo. So what we wanna do is just save it as a JPEG like we have right here. The good thing about the Safer Web is that it gives you a preview of how big this file is gonna be in terms of size. So as you can see right here, it's like 129 kilobytes, which is good. We definitely want to keep under the 200 kilobytes. So if it's, you know, one megabyte or like that's way too big of a file for your website. So 129 kilobytes, I think that's great. Uh, we could even go a little bit higher. So on the quality here, uh, you can bump that number and you can see how the the kilobytes are increasing as I move that number. So if I go to 80% quality, uh, which is very high for a JPEG, then it goes 190 kilobytes, which is just perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. All right, before we move on to method number two, I just wanna say bienvenidos. My name is Christian Pignon, one of the co-founders here at Bit Branding. We're an e-commerce growth agency that specializes in helping clothing stores grow and scale profitably online. We drop new videos every week. So just hit that subscribe button, you know you have to do it if you haven't done it and then turn on notifications so you don't miss out on our video. All right, so method number two is going to be Canva. 
So a lot of you may not have the resources to have the latest and greatest version of Photoshop 2023. So Canva, it's a viable option for a lot of people. So let's go ahead and check out Canva. I'm logged in in here to our account. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new design. This is another thing, like you wanna make sure that all of your photos are the same size. So whatever that may be for you, uh, you want to um, make sure that you do that, right? So I think I'm gonna do the, I think it's the other way around. So 1080 by 19, oops, 1920. And that should give us, yeah, kind of like the Instagram story, just more landscape version of this. I'm gonna go ahead and click, click create. And then I'm gonna upload my image, which I have right within here. Drop it in here, actually. Let me see if I can, it's a little preview. Oh, there we go, there we go, okay. So I have my, my full image right here. Now I wanna get rid of that white background. You can click on the image, you can click on edit image, and I already have that effect saved right within here, but you wanna look for a BG remover or background remover. This might be a feature. I see that has a little crown. So again, but again, this will still be a lot cheaper than what you would pay for Photoshop. Then we just click on that and just like magic, it gets rid of your background. Pretty awesome, huh? Clean cut. Again, you can do, you can still do the same thing where you kind of go in and just review the edges, make sure that there's nothing funny going on. So we do, we do have the same things, uh, same options that we had on Photoshop, which is the erase and restore, which is that that black and white that we were using. So you can do the same thing where if there's something that you don't like, then you can just very easily erase it. There you have it. Good thing about this is automatically gives us that white background. So we don't have to necessarily add that extra layer like we did on Photoshop. And then from here, you can click on share and we can click on download. It's gonna suggest the PNG, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna do the JPEG. It doesn't give you the actual, how big the file size is going to be. I would probably leave it right around there. The same size of the, of the image, the quality, I would probably leave it around 80%. If you find that your images are being saved just a little bit larger than you want, you can always go to, this is like one of my favorite places, is bulkresizephotos.com. And the reason being is that you can choose all your images at once. And uh, what you can do is is from here you can click on file size and you can just select the file size that you want so if you do 200 kilobytes it's going to be 200 kilobytes or less that it gets saved so it, and it will try to do the jpeg 80 percent image quality um, but it will do it automatically for you and then all at once and in bulk so you can just do all your product images drop them in here and make sure to save them correctly. Hey, I wanna to talk to you real quick about the Shopify VIP day. If you're here watching this because you have our, your own Shopify store, then we are starting a new program where you can get a Shopify store from zero, from nothing built in one day. We'll take care of products, of, of shipping price, of taxes, of your theme, of, of manipulating your theme, making it look good, uh, all of that, all your copy, everything. We'll take care of it all in one day. Um, if you are interested in Shopify VIP day, you can check the link in the description below. Uh, right now, we're just opening it up as a wait list uh, to see how many of you are interested in something like this. Um, you wanna find more information, you'll find it in that link below. All right, so method number three is remove.bg. Remove.bg, that's the actual link of the site. So www.remove.bg, same thing, just as the other ones. It allows you to remove the background. So we're gonna click on upload image in here. Let's go find the image that we've been using. Literally, I think that was the quickest of, out of all of them. As you can see, we can we have the image right there. It looks amazing. So it gives you the, I guess, the option to either you wanna, instead of get, get rid of the background, you can blur it. You could also add another photo for your background or they give you some options on some kind of funky backgrounds in here. So that's kind of cool. But what we want is just that clean white background. So we're gonna go to color and do that white one. Awesome. Now we'll click on download, download image, and allow. Let me go to save this on desktop. And I know they have a, yeah, so when you download these uh, on their remove.bg, it's gonna give you a way lower quality photo. And you can download the HD, but I think that's when they make you pay for it. So you have to sign up in order to, to get them in a higher resolution. You definitely want them in the higher resolution and then you manipulate the file size. I know we talked about you want a, a smaller file size, but you want to be the one in charge of this. Now, just to kind of give you some pricing options for remove.bg, as you can see, I guess a one free credit for the free account. So that might be not enough for you. So you'll probably end up on one of these like subscription plans where you just do it in bulk for a lot of, a lot of different photography. I think that's going to be one of the biggest benefits here is that you'll be able to do it in bulk very easily. The other two methods that we talked about, it's more of a manual process, right? More, more time consuming process. And before we get to the last one, if you like what you see, please consider clicking on that like button. 
All right, so method number four would be to use your iPhone native tools. If you have the latest iOS version, uh, there's a cool neat feature that you can just kind of tap and hold in order to do that cut out really quickly and very easily. So if you're on the go and you want to do this you know, on your phone, you can do that too. So um, I have a product photo right here and I can just, again, tap on it. As you can see, kind of did the outline. So I have the whole thing right there. That's really cool. You can see the outline going around it. Um, I can click on share and I can just drop this into an email and then just message it to me later. Um, so at least I have the cutout already ready to go um, where I can put it into some other software. Um, so it's not perfect, right? But at least if you want something quick and dirty and easy and you don't have a computer and you want to do it from your phone, you can just use uh, the iPhone native tools. Obviously there's going to be a lot of apps out there. So name where it might be simpler and easier, but I just want to kind of show you that even with the iPhone, um, you can just quickly, very easily do that. All right, hopefully that will help you get the gold standard of product photography on your website. Clean white backgrounds, it's the way to go. And if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below.